Matthew chapter 3. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this whole chapter. And I don't know where a good breaking point is. I've looked at this. I like to do the whole thing, but we'll see what happens. In those days came John the Baptist. Now John is not your original Baptist for your Baptist church. Preaching in the wilderness of Judea. So he comes preaching. Saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now the kingdom of heaven is a physical kingdom. There are people, there are animals, there are cities. It's about a land promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the twelve tribes. That's the Jewish heaven. And in the eternal life, there's a new earth. I believe the Jews get that. The Christians get new Jerusalem. There's a new heavens, and I believe maybe the Gentiles get those. The Christian in the church age is not looking for the kingdom of heaven. Though the Mormons are, the Jehovah Witnesses are, the Catholic Church is, and the Muslims. They all fight, they all battle to get land. That's not the Christian. This world is not our home. So that's another tall tale of Matthew is not churchy. And he's preaching in Judea, which is Jerusalem area, which is Israel, which is Judah. If it's church age, it would have been like Paul going to the Gentile city. For this is he that was spoken of by a prophet Isaiah, that's just the Greek spelling, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. That you can find in Isaiah 40, verse 3. John the Baptist, who is Elijah, who isn't Elijah because Israel rejected the Messiah, Jesus. And we'll learn later on in the Gospels that had Israel believed in Jesus and received Jesus as the Messiah, John the Baptist would have been Elias. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. That's Jewish. What happened when God took Israel out of Egypt? They went into the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, capital L. Who's coming? Jesus is coming. Lord, capital L. Make his path straight. The same John had his raiment of camel's hair and leathern girdle about his loins. Now, go to 2 Kings. This one we'll look up. 2 Kings 1 8. Second Kings 1 8. And the answer said, He's a hairy man. And girt with a girdle of leather about his loins, he said, It's Elijah the Tisbite. So I'm going to assume that John the Baptist was a hairy man. John the Baptist and Elijah were to be one in one, but upon rejecting Jesus, John is put into jail and beheaded. Verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 4. And his meat was locusts and wild honey. Perfect law diet. You go to Leviticus 11, locusts were allowed to be eaten. He went 
then went out to him Jerusalem, Jews, and all Judea, Jews, all the region round about Jordan. All right, there could have been Gentiles. And were baptized of him in Jordan. Okay, now this is the first time Baptist and baptized shows up. Now there's one other baptism in the Bible, Naaman, the Gentile, Syrian captain of the host. Seven times and he got rid of his leprosy. Confessing their sin. I got a problem, and maybe the Baptists are going to have a problem with me. I got a problem with most of them. We're going to call ourselves Baptists. The first time baptizing the Baptist shows up in the Bible, they are baptizing, confessing their sins. I was baptized a week after I was saved. I didn't confess my sins. My sins were, for me, were washed a week. Before I was baptized. On a Saturday afternoon when I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and I was saved. My sins are washed. My wife Lisa, then was my fiance, well, no, she was my girlfriend. On a Saturday afternoon, met with the pastor. She believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. A week and a day later, she was baptized. She didn't confess her sins. And we're going to look at the rule of the Bible. The first time something shows up in the Bible, that's the key. That's the point. No Baptist is baptized confessing his sins. If you are, and you think that baptism washes away your sins, you're going to hell. It's by faith and belief you are saved. Nothing else. Uh, we got the church running to Matthew again. We got the, this, there's no death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. For the Jew before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. They are to come to the water, they are to confess their sin and be baptized and be forgiven. This is not under the law times. Now, the Gospels, it, you got the law, and then you got today in the church age, you got salvation by grace through faith, nothing else. The Gospel is a third period of time. During the Gospel age, as far as what the Scriptures account, notice no one dies. And if they die in the Gospels, they're resurrected. Now, there'll be times when Jesus says, go to the temple, go to the priest. The gospel gives us a whole different way mixed with the law and the Messiah. But don't get the church confused of the law, which we don't follow the law. We don't follow the law we don't follow the law. Woe unto the woman that wears what pertains to the man and what man wears what pertains to the woman. That was a law. And I'm not Paul only. You can't find that in Paul's doctrine. Now Paul, you can find thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not honor thy father and mother. Confessing their sins. The church age does not get baptized confessing their sin. The church age doesn't confess their sins while being baptized. The church, to be saved, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are cleansed of your sin, and he is able with his blood, not with water. There's no blood. The only blood is they're bringing their animals to the temple. Not the blood of the bulls and goats, Hebrews said. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism. Now other Gospels are going to tell us they were sent. 
by the chief priest. Can you go find out what's going on over there? What are we hearing? What's going on? Now, Pharisees and Sadducees, this is the first time they show up, and they show up at John's baptism. Now, Acts 23, this one we'll look at, we must. We're going to look at who these characters are. Acts 23. Paul was a Pharisee. Acts 23, 8. And Paul's caused a great decision, trouble. You know, it ought not cause trouble and all that. Paul did. You know, I had to preach it up. You ought not be uh, sarcastic. Jesus was. You ought not to call out people's names. You want a list of people who called out names? Acts 23, 8. For the Sadducees, now remember this, sad you see. There's no hope. Say there's no resurrection, neither angel. That's what the Sadducees believe. But the Pharisee confesses both. The Pharisee will say there's a resurrection and there are angels. The Sadducees, there's no resurrection, there's no angels. Well, the Sadducees are going to have a problem with the once Jesus comes on the spot and begins his ministry, because people are going to start coming alive. But that's the difference between the two. And just always remember the sad you see. They have no hope in nothing. They're going to die and stay in the ground. And when you meet somebody who say, well, you know, death, that's it. There's nothing else and all that. Bible account, that's a Sadducee. Because we're just going to go in the ground and nothing else is going to happen. We're not coming up. There's no resurrection. Which completely denies the Bible because even the prophets spoke about that great and one resurrection. You know, standing before the judgment of God. So the Pharisee, that's Paul's group. Come to his baptism... Matthew 3, 7. So here they come. Oh, generation of vipers. We ought not to be cruel. You, ought, <laughs> you wait till Jesus gives them a tongue leash. Hey, you snakes, what are you doing here? He doesn't give them a howdy-do. Hey, how you doing? Good afternoon. You snakes. People say, well, you ought not to be cruel. You ought to be. You don't read your Bible. Who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Well, they were sent by the chief priests. They want to know what you're doing. Now, Peter will tell us that an apostle in Acts. When they call from Messiah, and I forget the other gentleman's name, after Judas died, he must have been in the earthly ministry of Jesus. Peter, James, John, Judas, and all them. The three and a half years that Jesus was in the ministry, they were there most of it. You had to see the resurrected Christ. They all did that. The upper room. You had to be baptized of John's baptism. Even Judas. Baptism can save you. What do you do with Judas? Oh, you completely ignore him by traditions, not Bible. What was Paul? He was a Pharisee. Oh, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Doesn't Paul say apostle? Paul had to be baptized of John's baptism before John died because you could have been baptized by John after he died. When John was put into prison and died, that's it for the calling of the apostles. Paul followed Jesus in his earthly ministry as a Pharisee. When they say to the Pharisees, Paul is somewhere in the picture. And see the resurrected Christ on the road to Damascus. When he's on that, that ship that, that's on that storm, he says, the angel came and told me, that angel is Jesus. 
So if any of the Pharisees were baptized now, it could be Paul. But at one point before John the Baptist is put in jail, between now and that point, Paul is baptized by John to be an apostle later. I don't know when. Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. All right, that's where the church falls. That's where the Catholic Church comes in. Prove you're saved. Well, James speaks about that too. And this is also a Pauline epistle and James. <clears throat> There's somebody I'm thinking of right now I know, and I say, Lord, I don't know if he's saved. Actually, a couple of people, one's died already. And the thing is, you got to look at their life and say, <clears throat> Do they show the fruits of being saved? That's what that's what John's talking about. Prove to me, and you can prove salvation by the new creed. Have you changed? Where's your goal? Are you still that old person? If you're still that old person, you know, they say you ought not to judge and all that. I can look at you are, and I can look at what you do and how you do things and say, I, I'm skeptical. You say you're saved, but you're... <laughs> when you call the Bible garbage and you speak lies... Uh, I'm skeptical. But I can't say it. And when I pray for those people, Lord, you know, and Satan knows. I don't know nothing. Think not to say within yourself, we have Abraham to our father. We're, we're Jews, we're saved. Not all. What do you do with Isaac? What do you do with Esau? What do you do with Esau's children? They were of Abraham. Are you telling me every single Jew of Jacob, every single Hebrew of the 12 tribes are in heaven? No, they're not. We saw that in the kings. Not every king was saved. Not every king ever repented and ever got right. But right now, what John is telling us right now is the salvation, what they're proclaiming right now, is we're Hebrews. That's a lot of luck for the Gentiles. That's a lot of luck for the Sumerians who are half-breeds. Now, Israel is the nation above all nations. What do you do with, with uh, oh man, it's his name. Uh, I can't think of his name. I just say it was, it was baptized with a leprosy. Name it. You tell me he's not saved? What do you do with the people in the king of Nineveh during Jonah's preaching? Well, I know what you do. Later on, they'll say, well, there's no prophet that came out. Yeah, Jonah came out. You ignore the scriptures. For what you want to teach. What do you do with the people before Abraham? What do you do with Noah? Noah was in Hebrew. What do you do with Adam? What do you do with Cain? What do you, I mean, what do you do with Seth? Never mind, Cain, Seth. God said to Noah, you are a just man. You're going to go to hell because you're not of Abraham? God said about Seth, not Cain, then men, be, then, men became, uh, then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. What about Abel? He wasn't of Abraham. 
And the mindset right now where we are, not church age, is if you're a Hebrew, you can prove who you are. Kind of hard. Well, what do we do in Matthew chapter 1? We prove the line of Jesus of David. How's that? How's that for a certification? What do we do later on in Luke chapter 3? We prove the lineage not only to Abraham, but we prove it to Adam. Jesus Christ is the only man alive that can trace his family to Adam. The Jews don't know who they are yet. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Now that's important. Now that is turn my page. Joshua. Joshua. Joshua chapter 4. We're not going to read the whole thing. Joshua 4 9. Now we got two places here. Joshua 4 9. And Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan. That's important because where Joshua is, is where John the Baptist is. This is the same place that Jesus is going to take Israel over. Prepare the pass, make the way straight. That's second advent. Through John the Baptist, who would have been Elijah. In the place where the feet of the priests that bear the ark, or, or, where did I see it? 420? 420. Now, Israel, Joshua chose 12 men. They grabbed 12 stones in the dry bed of the, of the Jordan. The rivers dried up like the Red Sea. And they carried the stones, it says, in those 12 stones, which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua, Fitch, and Gilgal. I am more so to believe it is 4-9. And 4-9, John the Baptist, I want to say Joshua, John the Baptist is pointing to those rocks. Joshua, history. Well, God can make those stones to be the children of Israel. Certifying Joshua. Now, what does Joshua mean? Joshua means Jehovah saved. There's a gentleman coming on the scene called Jesus. Jehovah saved. And they're both going to have the same root of Israel into the promised land, the kingdom of heaven. Look at that. I don't like to read my Old Testament. Shame on you. Back to Matthew 3. Verse 10. Still speaking to the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Now also the axe is laid to the root of the tree. All right, trees become a type of people. There they are. Is all Israel saved? Therefore, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast in the fire. Now let me ask you something, Christian. A man gets saved. He believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. He produces no fruit in his life. Upon the adoption of God and the Holy Spirit indwelling him, the salvation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because he produces nothing, he becomes a dead, I mean dead as in nothing. God's going to throw him into hell? No. 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 Don't go running to Matthew for church doctrine. And don't go be playing knick-knack, paddy-whack, take a verse out of Matthew here, take a verse out of Matthew there, take a verse there, Matthew. 
You better rightly divide. <clears throat> because there are people in the church that get saved and they do nothing. And they're going to be in heaven. They're going to be bald. They're going to have no reward. They're going to have ashes. But they're going to be in heaven. Paul says, Yet saved by the fire, their works will be burnt up, but not them. We are in a dispensation right now. If you have no fruit at all, you're going to hell. Now remember that when we start talking about fruits in the gospel. Some of it you can spiritually apply to the church, but you better be careful. <clears throat> Okay, so there's a doctor saying, hey, if you don't do anything at all, you're going to go to hell. And there are some churches that teach us that. Some church, if you don't do the sacraments, you don't belong to our church. There's churches, if you don't go knocking on doors trying to sell our magazines. If you don't get on your bicycle and pedal your bicycle around. And there are Baptist church with their Baptist rule. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Say, look, the water became before the repentance. Once you repent, then I'll put you in the water. What do you do with the dying thief that died the day that Jesus died on the cross? He was never baptized, but he said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He went to heaven without any baptism. And you have this suffering, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Because after Jesus dies, he shows up in paradise, picks up the dying thief, and then he's resurrected. What do you do with that salvation? But he that cometh after me, Jesus, is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. I'm not, I'm not even worthy to handle his shoes, which would be a servant's job then. You know, the, the, the wedding at Cana with the water pots and that, there would be servants there, and their job would be to wash the people's feet. They would have to take off their shoes and wash the feet. That's what John is saying, I'm not even worthy of doing that. And yet Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Okay, now we got a Pentecostal problem here. We got somebody who half reads the scripture. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. That is church age too. When you got saved, the Holy Ghost came and dwelt in you through the adoption of the Father, the Comforter. That didn't really happen during the Gospels. There were one group of people in the early book of Acts, they believed Peter and John, I think, was, was sent after the preaching of Philip to lay hands on them, then they got the, the Holy Ghost. What do you do with that one? And then you got with fire. Now you got the Pentecost. Got to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. About there's the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. They can't even say it right. Their devilish tongue can't say Holy Ghost. With fire. And it's, you know, you haven't been baptized. You've been baptized with Holy Ghost and fire. Let me ask you a question. Without going to no big Greek study and theological study and roll out the scrolls. and Is that a period at the end of fire? No, that's a, that's a colon. I had to think there for a moment. It's not the end of the sentence. The sentence continues to 12. Whose fan is in his hand. 
Now we're now we're going to talk about the threshing floor. And primary, many times when we talk about the threshing floor in the Bible, we are talking about God's symbol of judgment. Okay, so he'll purge you. He will thoroughly purge his floor. He will gather the wheat into the garner. That's like a barn. That's the good stuff. But he will burn up the chaff, that's the bad stuff, with unquenchable fire. What's an unquenchable fire? Tell me an unquenchable fire here on earth. There is none. Unquenchable fire is hell. Now, let's take 12 with 11. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. He will gather his wheat into the garner. That's the good stuff. That's the save. That's the wheat. Now remember the, the tares and the wheat. With fire. He will burn the chaff, the tares, with unquenchable fire. You cannot be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. You cannot be saved and go to hell. That's what the that's what the Pentecostals are saying. What John is saying in 11:12 is you will either be saved to the Holy Ghost and go to not heaven, but you go to a garden. You go to the land, the kingdom of heaven. Or hell as a waste. Now that waste, look at verse 10. Every tree which bringeth forth good fruit is hewed down. Excuse me. Every tree that bringeth forth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Verse 11, fire. Verse 12, unquenchable fire. That's L. You don't need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. And that will never happen. And what you're saying is the Holy Ghost will take you to hell. Or you'll bring the Holy Ghost into hell. Caution. But we take one verse and we put it on the sampler and we hang it on the wall. I can do all things through Christ with strength. Yeah, jump off the Empire State Building. I'm not twisting the scriptures. You are. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, certain Tamus and Esther. And Halloween. Ten, eleven, twelve. That fire is hell. That's for the lost. To be baptized in the Holy Ghost is those who are saved. Notice it's Jesus who will put you in the fire. All right, verse thirteen. Then comes Jesus to, from Galilee. So he's been in Galilee all his life. Notice it doesn't say Nazarite, Nazarene, just Galilee. To Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him. Wait a minute, Jesus. Now, John and Jesus, as far as the scriptures tell, have not, though their family and their family, we'll talk about that in Luke, Maybe the only time they ever came together as a family is the three times a year, but they don't hang out with each other. John and his family are in Jerusalem because John and his family are priests. Luke. We'll come to that later. I have need to be baptized of thee, come as thou to me. John the Baptist is of the priestly family. John the Baptist's dad, who I can never remember his name, the Achilles, I think it is, is in the holy place burning the incense. John is not only a Levite, he's a priest. 
All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. John's dad is in the holy place. And John tells Jesus, God, uh, you're supposed to be baptizing me. Rarely, rarely did Jesus, the Bible will tell us later, that he baptized. Very rarely will you find out, we'll get later, hopefully, Lord willing, Paul did not baptize much. They make a big deal about baptism. Jesus did, and Paul did not baptize much. Jesus answered and said to the first words of Jesus in Matthew. Supper. That means allow. Let it be so. That's funny though. The first words of Jesus in Matthew is suffer. Luke, the first words of Jesus, he's a 13 year old boy. Suffer it be so now. For, this, for thus it becometh us, you and me, John, to fulfill all righteousness. This needs to be so. Now, if you are baptizing for sin, okay, now we throw the monkey wrench into the gospel. If John is baptizing for sins, was Jesus a sinner? No. Jesus never sinned. And yet Jesus is baptized. The Jews are coming. I did this. I've done that. I've done this. And he puts them in the water. Jesus shows up. Jesus don't need to say anything. And he's baptized. Jesus does not need to be saved. It's a public testimony. It's a public statement of a fact that you are declaring of God, of Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. It does not, and it has not ever saved. It may have taken Naaman's leprosy away, but it didn't save him. So if anybody thinks, well, baptism saves, or we teach back, remember Jesus went into the water. And Jesus went under the water. Are you saying Jesus is a sinner? <clears throat> and I guarantee outside the Bible, they got probably some way explaining that. Jesus, when he was baptized, so Jesus sinned. No. He's declaring to all, right here, he's declaring to all the people, all the Jews, as put forth by John, this is the Messiah. The, the, the week I was baptized, at the Open Door Baptist Church in Pawkatuck, Connecticut. I didn't get baptized to be saved. I'm, to the people that were there, the church and my family, I made a public proclamation. <clears throat> I have put my faith and trust in Jesus. I confess no sin. That Jesus died, he, he was buried, and he arose again the third day. I am dying to myself. He's going to put me under the water. I am going to come out as, as a new creature for Christ. I'm coming out of that water. That baptism pictures death, burial, and resurrection. It's a public testimony to all. I'm saved. I am now a Christian. Now, warning. Warning flags. 
Hail warning. Not all baptism in religions have that same thing. Not all baptisms are treated equally, if I can say that. Because there are religions out there who teach baptism is for salvation. Without baptism, you can't go to heaven. I guess Jesus is going to go to heaven now because he was baptized. See how ridiculous it sounds? Went up straightway out of the water. He wasn't sprinkled and he wasn't doused. He went under the water. Immersion. Naaman went under the water. The heavens, plural, were open unto him, Jesus. Or John. And he saw the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, like a dove, not a dove. Your pictures of the dove are wrong. Like a dove. Well, my dear, you've got to skim the skin like a rose petal. Is her skin like the a rose petal? Is it a rose petal? It's not a rose petal. She don't have thorns. The word like is a descriptive word. It's not a dove. And you say, well, how did the Holy Spirit, what, what's it talking about? Look at a dove, and I've seen a dove. Look how a dove comes down. It even makes a sound as it comes down. That's what the Spirit, that's what the Holy Spirit did. It didn't come down as a bird. And lighted upon him. Almost like in Acts chapter 2 where the Holy Spirit looked like cloven tongue. But it wasn't fiery cloven tongues because the men would be, ow, 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 burn my shoulder, ow. By the way, they will put that baptism of fire and those cloven, cloven tongues together and then you got to talk of tongues. No, the only way you're going to get a tongue of fire is in hell, the lake of fire. And it looks like only John saw this in Jesus. I'm not sure about the people around. But it would have been a sign for the Jews, and Jews require a sign. I think that's 1 Corinthians 3.11. Lo, a voice from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, capital S. In whom I am well pleased, God does not say I am proud. God never says I am proud. God will say, well done, or I'm well pleased. Never pride or proud. And that's a sign to say, at least to John the Baptist, there he is. Because later on, John the Baptist is going to doubt. I would doubt, too, if my entire ministry ended up in prison. And I'm about to get butchered. 